गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास गुड मॉर्निंग सर in previous class we have studied the concept of process scheduling and let's revise firstly uh, previous class what we have studied then we will go for today's topic first come first serve cpu scheduling and algorithm numericals and let's start uh, i am quickly revising previous class okay this is the first come first serve uh, i have to firstly revise this one okay Uh, what is a uh, process scheduling? Why do we need process scheduling? Because we want our CPU to use its power as much possible by it. Uh, it will only possible when we give it a uh, number of processes to run. As the we know that CPU has the enormous power to for computation. So the process scheduling is for multi programming to have some process running at all time to maximize the CPU utilization, and. Uh, your process which is between multiple processes simultaneously with the help of schedulers there are three type of schedulers long term scheduler that controls the degree of multi programming it uh, uh, decide number of processes will be in the ready queue and short term scheduler we take the uh, selected process from the ready queue and will allocate to the cpu there is also one more additional uh, scheduler which is called medium term scheduler which is used to reduce the degree of multi programming as you can see here that uh, uh, partially executed swept out Processes are taken out by the medium term scheduler, and they will uh, uh, swap in as and when CPU ha has less load on it. So this is how medium term scheduler works. And then uh, we have seen that the, there is a concept of a context switch because once a process has to switch uh, CPU has to switch multiple processes, it has to store the state of those processes. Uh, and this context switch time is uh, basically overhead because uh, our system does no useful work while switching. And this context switch time depends upon the hardware itself. Someone is asking question. Asutosh, can you sir please explain this diagram? If you have time, or maybe in the last, which diagram you are asking about? Medium term scheduler. Uh, okay, you are asking about. Uh, I am just revising. This is the class uh, we have studied in previous class. Maybe you are missing in previous class, Asutosh. This still I am revising. Uh, here you can see that a process firstly comes to the ready queue. Uh, if it is executed by the CPU at one time, it will be end. otherwise that process has to wait for some input output activity it will go in waiting state and once that input output activity completed it will again feedback to the ready queue and here there is also a use of a, a medium term scheduler it uh, what it is here it is used to reduce the degree of multi programming i told you in study class that by showing you the cpu processing of my laptop that it is only using 40% if i increase number of processes or number of user application it will go up to 90 or 99% and then other applications or all applications start running very slowly that is why we wants to reduce the degree of multi programming so that uh, some useful or uh, crucial processes may not lag in this way we use medium term scheduler to swap out partially executed less critical processes or less uh, uh, least essential process at that moment suppose i am not using ms word right now then i will swap out that process from the cpu as it is this is partially executed swap out process and it will reduce the speed uh, of a cpu krishna means asking sir since a cpu is capable of multi programming then why do we need medium term scheduler of course beta cpu is capable of doing multi programming but how many number of programs can be taken by the cpu at a time it depends upon your capability of the hardware only as i show you uh, as i show you in previous class also let me show you once again here you can see the task manager and here you can see my cpu usage is right now only 47% and i am using only three application right now first one my microsoft presentation second one is zoom application my microphones and it's still uh, suppose my cpu is very weak or having a i3 processor or 2 gb ram it is uh, still in three application it is using 43% of my cpu usage and if i increase my number of applications then it will shoot up up to 90 or plus 90% then it will reduce the processing speed of other processor this is what i am telling you and this is what i told you in previous class also 
okay so i am just quickly revising so that you can understand the numericals we are studying in today's class i guess you have not uh, study book yesterday as i recommended that you have to go for book also because in a 40 minute lecture i cannot cover each and everything uh, related to this context so you have to study yourself also this is of two type preemptive and non preemptive you can say that uh, your process will switch from running to waiting state running to ready state waiting to ready state and terminates one and four lie under the category of non preemptive non preemptive you can think of a pause and start pause and start but uh, what is uh, uh, sorry non preemptive is you cannot pause uh, that system in preemptive you can pause and start just like a download example i have given you some downloads have the capability of resume and some download don't have the capability of resume those download those not have a capability of resuming that lies under the non preemptive download and those have the capability of resuming comes under the preemptive so this is how you can relate these things from your past experience and there is one more thing this is called dispatcher it actually gives control of those processes selected from the short term scheduler and it required switching context switching to user mode and jumping to the proper location in the user program to start that program and there of course there is a dispatch latency because time taken from the dispatcher to stop one process and start another uh, there is our five scheduling criteria cpu utilization waiting time um, we want to make cpu as busy as possible and waiting time is what the sum of the periods of the time in which a process waits in the ready queue we will calculate waiting time and turn around time in today's class on some scheduling algorithm that we will see second is turn around time you can see this is just a total time taken by your process for completion of its execution as how you can calculate this it you can calculate this by taking the difference of time of completion of the process and the time of submission of the process to the ready queue then we have throughput the number of process that completed by the cpu in unit time and response time is the time taken from when a request was submitted until the first response is produced i given you an analogy of the response uh, response time suppose you have asked a query on the google classroom today at uh, 9 am and i give response in the night 9 pm then what is the response time to solve your query this is of 12 hours so this is the thing that we want to reduce that 12 hours is not very good to solve some query so we want to reduce response time we want to reduce turn around time we want to reduce waiting time and what we want to maximize cpu utilization and the throughput so this is the optimization criteria we want to maximize the cpu utilization and throughput and what we want to minimize we want to minimize turn around time waiting time and the response time so this was the previous class now today's topic is first come first serve scheduling let's see how it works and we will uh, please everyone have some pen and paper with you we will do some numerical on this scheduling algorithm uh, i am giving you 30 seconds to go and find some pen and paper with you so that we can do numerical side by side come on do it fast have some pen and paper with you come on i am giving you 30 seconds arrange pen and paper everyone please arrange pen and paper with you so that we can have a numerical on today's class <clears throat> okay <clears throat> sorry everyone is having pen and paper right now so i am assuming so let's start today's class with the topic first come first serve cpu scheduling algorithm as the name suggests it is what first come first serve that is fcfs you can have an analogy with the first in first out have you heard about fifo queue first in first out uh, i guess you all have and uh, you all have studied the data structure in your previous semester i guess okay so what yes, what sir. do you mean by fifo queue this is first in first out right first in first out queue that is uh, which come first will be served first right so this first come first out scheduling <clears throat> uses the data structure of fifo queue that is first in first out okay lifo also lifo was what last in first out that was the stack you have study okay may i ask you one question can i say that fifo 
and for phi are the same phi point for phi are the same uh, uh, my question is phi fo and for phi are the same first out first in or it is a different data structure other than phi for q can i have an answer of this question no. you can simply say yes or no that phi fo and for phi are same you can simply write yes or no what is the your answer sir it will be different no okay uh, anyone else anyone else no shweta is saying no prakhar no anand tiwari no uh, everyone is saying no okay chitranshu is also saying no uh, okay can uh, anyone give me the reasoning why you are saying it is no for fi fi point for fi are not same first out first in and first in first out uh a class is also saying no <clears throat> okay can you tell me do you have study active voice and passive voice do you know active voice and passive voice abhishek is saying same only one person is coming with different thought process every even else is saying no uh, can i have uh, changed my question can you tell me do you have studied active voice and passive voice in your school uh what is the concept yes, of active voice and passive voice in active voice <clears throat> subject comes first right and in passive voice what happen object come first right am i right am i right about active voice yes, and sir. passive voice okay yes, yes now, sir now what we are having first in first out right what i am saying uh whatever will be the input first will be taken out first right this is called phi for now if i say for phi <clears throat> what will be the output first <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> what will be the output first that will be input first so this is kind of a rephrasing of a sentence excuse me <clears throat> uh, this is just kind of rephrasing of the statement so both are the same either you say first in first out or you say first out first in there is no difference just like you can say lifo and foli both are the same you we are just rephrasing the statement you are taking the subject first and the object last in the active voice and in the passive voice you are having object first and then the subject in the last so this is just understanding of your english language nothing else okay so this is called a common reasoning common sense so lifo is last in first out and foli is what first out last in for stack purpose i am saying so both are the same okay so this was just the quick revision what you have study actually i am uh, i just want you to relate all those things that you have studied previously only then you can understand that what you are studying right now is quite clearly relatable to that you have studied previously okay so now everyone is clear that for fi and fi for both are the same yes sir okay so let's start leaf for and foli are the same and fi for and for fi are all the same so these are the same thing so let's see uh what is fc fs scheduling it take uh, use of fifo q and this is of which category this is of category of non primitive means once it is um, started one process executing it has to completed either or it has to wait indefinitely so this is the simplest cpu scheduling we have the process that request the cpu first is allocated to the cpu firstly the process that request the cpu first the process that request the cpu first is allocated to the cpu firstly this is the concept of kya karenge yaar fc fs scheduling uska kya karenge this is the concept of fc fs scheduling now the implementation of fc fs policy is easily managed by the fifo queue what is fifo queue this is first in first out queue or you may write it as fofi queue first out first in queue 
so let's have a numerical on this suppose we are having three processes and their bus time bus time here is you can think of a time taken by it to execute suppose these processes arrive at time 0 in the order p1 p2 and p3 means they all are comes at time 0 and their order of arriving is firstly p1 comes then p2 then p3 then we have to find four things waiting time average waiting time turn around time and average turn around time what is the waiting time this is the time total time taken by a process that it waits in the ready queue and for its chance to go for the cpu execution and what is average waiting time we will sum the individual waiting time of p1 p2 and p3 and then divide by number of processes we are having then we can calculate the average waiting time common sense then what is turn around time we have find the turn around time it is the total time taken by a process from it is waiting into the ready queue and the time it takes to execute so you can calculate it in two ways our first method is you can find the time of completion and minus with the time of arrival that is into the ready queue here time of arrival in the ready queue is time 0 so whatever the completion time we will simply minus with 0 and we will get the turn around time for p1 process then similar process will be applied on p2 process and for p3 process and second method is you can calculate the turn around time by finding the firstly waiting time and add it to the bus time means uh, what where time it has waited into the ready queue and the time taken by it to execute itself so when you sum the waiting time plus bus time you will get the turn around time so there are two methods any method you can use and here is the average turn around time you have to simply divide the sum of these individual turn around time of processes with the number of processes we are having so i am solving first question and please understand very concentrate on this question so that we you can understand how we can solving uh, this diagram we are having this is called gantt chart what it is called it is called gantt chart here you can see that p1 is having 24 uh, bus time so it uh, is non preemptive firstly p1 is fed to the cpu so so it will take 24 unit time of the cpu then p2 3 unit time then p3 3 unit time so how to calculate the waiting time of p1 p1 arrives at time 0 and at time 0 it is allocated to the cpu so p, p1 waited in the ready queue how much unit time it waited only 0 unit time because as it comes into the ready queue it is allocated to the cpu so it, it p1 do not wait into the cpu and uh, what about uh, p2 p2 comes at the zero time and it allocated the cpu at the 24 unit time so waiting time of p2 is 24 waiting time of p3 is 27 how because p3 arrives at time zero but it has to wait until p1 and p2 has completed their execution so when p1 completed at 24 unit time p2 will take three more unit time so total 27 unit time p3 has to wait into the ready queue after 27 unit time p3 will be sent to the cpu for the execution so this is how we calculate the waiting time any problem do you understand this or i revise how to calculate the individual waiting time of processes please write in the chat box uh, yes or no <clears throat> uh, do you understand how to calculate the waiting time of individual processes p1 p2 and p3 please write in the chat box yes uh, tapish is saying no okay i am again telling you that as you can see here uh, i am revising once again okay okay let's see here you can see that p1 process is taking 24 bus time and it arrives at time 0 right so when it comes into the ready queue it quickly sent to the where cpu so p1 waiting time will be the zero because as soon as it comes into the ready queue it will be sent to the cpu for the execution but what is the waiting time of p2 p2 is also arrives at time zero right but p2 has to well wait until p1 completed its execution so p2 has to wait until 24 execution time done by the p1 so waiting time of p2 is what 24 unit time 
and what will be the time of uh, waiting of P3. P3 is still waiting in the ready queue because P1 firstly executed 24 bus time in the CPU, then P2, P2 go into the CPU and for three unit time. So total 24 plus three, that is 27 unit time P3 has to wait into the ready queue. So this is how we calculated the waiting time of P1 zero, waiting time of P2 24, and the waiting time of P3 is 27. You can uh, find out waiting time very easily if you uh, draw this Gantt chart. So firstly, we have to draw this Gantt chart based upon the scheduling algorithm concept. And then we can easily calculate the waiting time. As you can see that waiting time of P1 is a uh, left side starting time, that is zero. P2 is waiting time uh, from where it is started, simply write 24. What is the waiting time of P3 from where it is started? Simply write 27. So um, not very complex thing. Uh, how to calculate average? Everyone know about how to calculate average. You have to sum all these bus time and divided by number of processes, right? Waiting time of P1, waiting time of P2, waiting time of P3, and individual waiting time these are, and we have to decide by the number of processes. How many processes we are having? We are having three different processes. So we divided by three. So let's see what is the answer, zero plus 24 plus 27 divided by three, we are having the answer as 17. So are we good with waiting time and average waiting time? Everyone understood? This is very simple concept. Firstly, you have to simply draw this Gantt chart and find out this left side time from where it process started execution. P1, waiting time zero, P2, 24, P3, 27. Very simple concept. You don't have to put your extra brain on this question because this is the simplest CPU scheduling algorithm. You have to simply draw this diagram on the basis of which process come first. P1, 24 unit time, P2, three, simply sum three unit to the 24 and simply sum three unit to this 27. And this is the left side value you have to give to the waiting time. P1, zero, P2, 24 and the P3, 27. And average, not a big deal to find out. So the next question is turnaround time. Uh, what is the turnaround time? I told you this is the uh, difference of time of completion minus time of arrival. Uh, as we know that in this particular question, the instruction has given that all these processes comes at time zero. Sir, so screen is moving. Screen is moving because your internet connection is slow. And uh, screen is not moving. Okay. Now it has moved because I was not moving the screen. I am just explaining what it is written on the screen. Asutosh is asking what will be the role of 30 here. Uh, role of 30 comes in the turnaround time. I am explaining the next. What is the role of 30 here? Okay, so what is turnaround time? This is the time of completion minus time of arrival. So what is the time of completion of P1? time of completion of P1 is 24. And when it arrives, it arrives at time zero. So how to calculate the turnaround time of P1? Completion time is 24 and arrival time is zero. So 24 minus zero is 24. This is a turnaround time. This is a total turnaround time, time taken by your process to complete its execution. Now, what is the turnaround time of P2? You have to find the completion time of P2. What is the completion time of P2 is? This is 27. And when it arrives in the ready queue, it arrives at time zero. So completion time is 27, arrival time is zero. So you will get 27 unit time as the turnaround time for the P2. Means you can also see it here as a second method. What is the waiting time of P2? Waiting time of P2 is 24. And what is the uh, bus time of P2 is three. So 24 plus three is the 27 turnaround time, okay? So what is the turnaround time for P3 process? Here is the time of completion of P3 is 30. And when P3 arrives at time zero, so 30 minus zero is 30. Um, we are using here arrival time as zero for simplification of this uh, question understanding. We, we can have very in, uh, arrival time in uh, later on questions. So don't think of that uh, how can at time zero multiple processes comes arrive and we are having understanding about the order of the processes that P1 come first, then P2, then P3. So now we are clear with the turnaround time. You have to calculate turnaround time by finding the difference of completion time minus arrival time. Are we good 
with turnaround time? Yes or no? Please write in the chat box. Are you, are we are done, good with turnaround time? Okay, so uh, you got the answer. What is the use of 30 also? That in a turnaround time, we have to simply find the completion time then minus it with the arrival time. Here arrival time of all these three processes is zero and the completion time is, you can see here that for P1 it is 24. So you have to minus 24 with the zero, you get turnaround time. Turnaround time you can simply think of a total time taken by a CPU for its execution, whether it is waiting in the ready queue or it is executing in the CPU. So you have to give the total time, how much it will taken by the process, right? So uh, let's see how to calculate average turnaround time we have to sum all these individual turnaround time and divide by the number of processes so we are having 24 plus 27 plus 30 and then you have to divide it by three we will get 27 unit time so this is how we calculate average waiting time average turnaround time so Everyone is good with this first question. So let's start our next question. We have some four processes with the bus time eight, five, six, and seven. And suppose the condition is same that every process comes arrive at zero. Now you have to calculate all these four things. Uh, uh, now let's start solving this question. Please solve this question now. Firstly, we have to draw the Gantt chart and then we will go for solving this question. Start your pen and paper and solve your question. And please, no one will give the answer in the chat box only until unless we call no one write in the chat box uh, i am giving you one minute to solve this question one minute has already done this is 928 at 929 we will go for solution of this question come on Once you are done with this question, please write done in the chat box. Come on, do it fast. Has anyone completed this question? Please write in the chat box done. If you have completed, please don't give the answer. I'm not interested in answer that I will explain you, but I'm interested in if you are doing this question or not. This is all about trust. You can uh, fool me by simply writing done, even you have not completed this question, but this is not how you can understand these topics. You have to solve these questions by yourself only. Okay, time is up. No one has completed? No one? Okay, I am again solving this question. Now you can have some more concept on this. So here is uh, uh, Abhishek has written done, very good. So let's see uh, how to draw this Gantt chart. P1, what is the waiting time of P1? Eight, then five, then six, then seven. So eight unit time is for P1, then five unit time for P2, then six unit time for P3, and then seven unit time for P4. So this is how Gantt chart is completed. Prikhar, Feroz, Pooja, Ananya, everyone has written done. Now please compare your answer here that you have done correctly or not. So what is the waiting time for P1 is? Of course, zero, because this is the first process we have assigned to the CPU as soon as it is in the ready queue. Then waiting time for P2 is eight, waiting time of P3 is 13, and waiting time for P4 is 19. How to calculate the average waiting time? Simply sum zero plus eight plus 13 plus 19 that is 40 and you have to divide by the number of processes and the answer is 10. Uh, everyone having the same answer we are you have solved the question so this is how the waiting time and the average waiting time then let's see turnaround time time of completion of p1 is 8 arrival is 0 so 8 is a turnaround time 
for P2, completion time is 13, arrival time is 0. For P3, completion time is 19, arrival time is 0. For P4, completion time is 26 and arrival time is 0. So this is the turnaround time. And how to calculate average turnaround time? You have to simply plus 8 plus 13 plus 19 plus 26 and divide by the number of processes. So here we will having the answer 16.5. So uh, this is how we calculate the turnaround time, average turnaround time, waiting time, and average waiting time. So are you good with solving these type of questions? Um, you, this type of question will surely come in your examination. So you have to keep practicing these type of questions. So what is maybe the issue arise in the FCFS scheduling? Our next thing is FCFS scheduling issue. As you can see here in the first question that the P1 is having the 24 bus time. Now P2 and P3 is having three bus time only. So P2 and P3 take very less time of CPU, but that first process that comes into the CPU is using 24 bus time means a lot of time taken by the CPU or by P1 and P2 and P3 has very little work to do, but they have to wait. Suppose you are in the office and uh, P1, uh, suppose P2 and P3 just want the si signature of a coordinator, sir, but P1 uh, wants uh, something uh, very crucial thing like uh, something very work, take long time. Suppose it wants to verify all his documents. So P2 and P3, those who are waiting just for a signature on their application has to wait till first P1 completed their each and everything with the coordinator. So uh, this type of issue is called convoy effect where short process is behind the long process. Here we can have a diagram to uh, visualize this type of issue. Here you can see a bus is in front of some bicycle or cycle that are the short processes. Uh, you can see the one, two, three, four, five, six. Suppose six unit time is taken by this longer job and two unit time taken by these three other shorter jobs, but they cannot get the control of the CPU until and unless this longer job has completed. So this is the issue in first come first serve scheduling because uh, the short jobs can be completed if it has to be come first before the longer job. <clears throat> Let's have this effect by doing some numerical. We are having the first question again revisited. Now I have changed the order. Suppose the process arrives <clears throat> at the order P2, P3 and P1. Now calculate the average waiting time and average turnaround time. Then we will compare this average waiting time and average turnaround time with the first question that we are having. Now, please again start, have pen and paper. I am giving you two, two minutes to solve this question. Here, your time of arrival has, uh, sorry, your process uh, sequence has changed that firstly P2 come, then P3, then P1. Now calculate your average waiting time and average turnaround time. Now you can give the answer in the chat box. What is the average waiting time and what is the average turnaround time of this question? You are having two minutes to solve this question. <clears throat> Everyone please solve this question very quickly. Okay, we have got some answer. Abhishek is saying average waiting time is three and average turnaround time is 13. 3, 13, 3, 13. Uh, Krisham is 13, 3, 13. Dushant, okay. Okay, very good. I'm solving this question. Let's see if you are having the same answer. 
Satoshi thirteen three three thirteen. Everyone is having three and thirteen as an answer. <clears throat> so P two is having three bus time. So I am solving this question. P two arrives at time zero, and when it completed, when it completed its execution at time three, and when P three completed three plus three that is six. And P four is having twenty four bus time, so it will comes here at thirty complete here. Now let's see what is the waiting time. Waiting time of uh, P one is what? P one arrives at time zero, but P one got the control of the CPU at unit time six. And P two time waiting is what zero. P three is what three. Right, so average waiting time is equal to average waiting time is what six plus zero plus three divided by number of the processes. So what nine by three. So what is the average waiting time is three. Now turn around time. What is the turn around time for P one? What is the time of completion of P one is thirty. And when it was arrives at time zero, so what is the turnaround time for P one is thirty. For P two, what is the completion time? This is three. When it arrives at time zero, so what is the turnaround time for P one? P two is three. Go for P three. P three is what? Completion time is six. Arrival time is zero. So what we have six. Now average turnaround time is what? Thirty plus three plus six, right? Then uh, we have to sum. Then divide by number of process. So we are having what? Thirty-nine divided by three. So what will be the answer? Is thirteen. And you can write here unit time. Three and thirteen unit time. This will be the complete answer. You have to write here unit time. Understand? Otherwise, marks will be deducted. You have to write each and everywhere unit time. You understand? Unit time. What will be the unit time of CPU is using? So you have to write here unit time. What will unit is using for the time? Suppose microsecond, milli microsecond, uh, millisecond, nanosecond. So this will be the unit time. So this is the question. we are done with so we will go for uh, some more cpu scheduling algorithm in a later class till now go for some questions in your book